So it has happened again. Perhaps the lead political opponent of Vladimir Putin is dead. Alexei Navalny, age 47, described by his wife as healthy and happy, but a consistent and fierce Putin critic has died in prison. A former U.S. ambassador to NATO, Kurt Volker, with us from the Munich conference there in Germany. And, sir, uh, thank you for being here on, on short notice. Uh, j just your reaction to Navalny and the fact that the Kremlin says it knows nothing about it. Yeah, well, first off, it's uh, sad for, for him and for his family. And so, of course, we extend condolences to them. Uh, but this is not a surprise to anybody. Uh, they have been trying to kill Navalny uh, many times. You remember the case of Novichok in his underwear, poison sprayed at him at a rally. Um, he is someone that uh, Putin has wanted to keep away from politics, keep him in jail. And now they've engaged for the past several years of a policy of keeping him in prison, putting him in increasingly difficult conditions while in prison, hoping that that would somehow take a toll on his health, which today, in fact, it did. I, you know, there's a, an amazing documentary called Navalny that, uh, that won the Oscar that year about his courage, his determination, and how he said that the uh, that a film can be a weapon deployed later on, right? So that other people can see it and know what was actually mm -hmm. happening. I wonder this morning about the push from the Biden administration and how much more they should ratchet up the pressure in order for us to get Evan Gerskovich of the Wall Street Journal mm -hmm. and Paul Whelan back immediately. Absolutely. These, we are seeing evidence of what the conditions in Russian prisons can be like. Those two Americans that you mentioned, Evan Gershkowicz and Paul Whelan, are there unjustly, and they should be released immediately, and that should be a priority of the Biden administration. We should also be calling attention to the case of Vladimir Karaborza, who is also part of the Russian opposition. He's a Russian citizen, but an American resident. Uh, his wife lives in the United States. Uh, he is held in prison for a multiple year sentence, uh, simply for telling the truth about Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Uh, and he needs to be transferred at a minimum to a prison where he is visible, transparent, where his health will be taken care of. Right now, he is under wraps inside the Russian prison system. No one really knows how he's doing. And he should be released as soon as possible as well under Russian law. So the vice president is at that location where you are. Just here's how she delivered the message from the U.S. with the news. We've all just received reports that Alexei Navalny has died in Russia. This is, of course, terrible news, which we are working to confirm. My prayers are with his family, including his wife, Yulia, who is with us today. And if confirmed, this would be a further sign of Putin's brutality. Whatever story they tell, let us be clear, Russia is responsible. And we will have more to say on this later. Were, were you in the room for that message? And if so, how is this being received in Munich? Yeah, unfortunately, I was not in the room uh, when she delivered those remarks. Uh, it is taken with a bit of um, concern here in Munich, but not surprise. Uh, people knew already that Putin is that brutal. This is the nature of the regime under Vladimir Putin. So no one's really surprised that he died. But it sort of cements the fact that uh, we are going down a, a path of no return here with Russia. Um, Putin's brutality is uh, extreme. Uh, he is imprisoning his opponents. Uh, there's another one who they allowed to start running for president. They just disqualified him because he spoke up against the war in Ukraine and was gaining support. So there's nowhere else for us to go. We can't pretend that we're going to get back to a normal relationship with Vladimir Putin. We have to really start pushing back on Russia in every way possible. And that begins with getting this aid package through to Ukraine so that they can stop the Russian forces that are attacking and killing Ukrainians and try to restore some semblance of containment in Europe. Sir, thank you for your time. Um, Kurt Volker from Munich. Thank you. On that. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.